that perfect amount of pain where I'm distracted enough where I can think clearly. It is a quick body scan, real quick. You will know how you are feeling when you start to run, even if you didn't know how you were feeling before. Any type of run makes someone a runner. You know, you can go out your door for five minutes a day and then you're a runner. And I think that's really, really cool. It was pretty scary to go to a college team. I thought that I was going to be the worst on the team by far. I never predicted how a team that was motivated and driven and a group of women who all really love to do the same thing, that common focus and drive and having that bigger thing to work towards, I loved it. Like I really felt deeper in love with the sport. A third of the time, you're going to feel on fire, you're going to feel great. And a third of the time you're gonna feel pretty average, and a third of the time you're gonna feel pretty, pretty awful. I had been working out all through COVID. I felt like I was pretty fit in the fall. And we started having races and I was just surviving them. I just felt like every workout was just burning through my whole tank and then some. And I started to have abdomen pain. I think we normalize a lot of women's pain in general. If you have a period, same thing with, you know, birth control methods like the pill or like an IUD. These things are have a lot of side effects or a lot of pain associated with them and we just kind of brush it off. I went to the doctor multiple times and I talked about how I was starting to have my period every two weeks and how it was different and I was feeling fatigued. Athletes really value that mind-body connection and for the first time I started to feel like my body was a stranger to me. I knew something was wrong and I advocated for myself, but I wasn't being heard. I was diagnosed with bone stress injuries in one of my feet. It just was a sign that there was something else going on. Because your ovaries regulate your bone health. It's all connected. You appeared out of thin air. Took my hand and told me not to care, but your stare never had I started to get back into running. I was having a really hard time, but I thought that it was just because I hadn't run in a while. And then I fainted on a run. I got wheeled into the hospital and I heard a nurse go like, oh, don't give her a room. Like, she's just a runner. She needs like a juice and then she can leave. And I was like, okay, like I'm not being dramatic. And then every time I tried to get up, I would faint again. Then they thought I was pregnant because I, my tumor produced HCG, and so I actually tested positive for pregnancy. And I was like, mm, there's no way, because obviously not straight. I was just freaking out. I was like, am I pregnant? Like, the ultrasound 
That's where they picked up the tumor. I believe it was 17 centimeters. It was huge. My mom finally comes into the ER and then the OBGYN walks in and she says, so it says here you've been sexually active with a woman but not a man in the past six months. And my mom didn't know I was gay. Uh, yeah. And then it was like, first they were telling my mom that I was pregnant. Now they come in and tell her I'm gay and then they follow it up with a, oh, but you have a huge tumor, cancerous tumor inside of you. So I'm like, two truths and a lie, pregnant, gay, or cancer. I wasn't pregnant, but I am gay and I did have cancer. Mental health matters so much in the sport specifically. My cancer and my coming out both definitely affected my running. I never officially came out to my team or my coaches in the way of saying like, I'm not straight, but in the fact that I was in a relationship with another woman. We make the athletes understand that we are in this together. We are one family. We are all brothers and sisters here. And so we are making sure that everybody is free in our team to basically be who they are. It is a safe place whenever you come to practice. Nobody's judging you, nobody's gonna think of you any other way because of anything, because of how you identify yourself. Athletes are generally perceived as not being gay. Answer the call from someone I didn't expect to hear from. I think in general, my teammates took it really well. Honestly, I think better than I maybe expected at the time. When everything was feeling like it was falling apart, that's when I realized that I wasn't straight. I think it's because all of the identities that I had held myself to and all of the boxes I had put myself into were all just coming completely undone. I started to open myself up to the possibility that I wasn't straight without even realizing that's what was happening because I had a crush on a girl and I didn't even question it and it seemed so normal. Coming out just always keeps happening because it's a process where you're going to be coming out to people your entire life and I think that's something that's really important to understand about the queer community. It's sort of this strange and difficult experience where a lot of times with certain people you're testing the waters of how much you should come out or will they pick up what you're putting down and for some people you're just completely coming out and for some of the time coming out just means that you're at the store and someone sees you with your partner. It's not a one and done process. I was outed to my mom at the hospital. I didn't have any agency over how that happened and yet at the same time I think I would have had a really challenging time coming out to my parents but it also felt violating in certain in a certain sense as well. So I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in the spring of my sophomore year. And it was a long time coming as far as the symptoms until my diagnosis. I went through a period where I was really struggling in races and in workouts and I just felt like I needed so much recovery and I ended up having cancer. <laughs> Bridget and I, we're really close friends, and at the same time, we have that close-knit athlete um, uh, coach relationship. She told me, coach, and she broke the, the, you know, the news to me. I went to my room and I cried. I don't think I've even felt that way. Like, why? Why her? I needed emergency surgery for the tumor because it was really, really huge. I had barely had any time to process the fact that I had cancer. It just felt boom, boom, boom. And so I go into surgery and I'm terrified. And I had a radical hysterectomy. She ended up having to remove my entire reproductive system. And I didn't expect it. I just was about to turn 20 and I just found out I will never have kids. To completely go in for surgery and come out and you're you're stripped of all of your reproductive organs, whether that's important or not, you just don't have a choice. I mean, that's like night and day. 
I'm the Director of Athletic Medicine and the Senior Associate Athletic Director for the CATS Health, Wellness, and Performance Program. 0.02% incidence per 100,000 could get this type of cancer. So it's extremely rare. It was um, a malignant ovarian germ cell tumor. When you have cancer, you sometimes it feels like you stop being a person, you start being a patient. It just really changes your relationship with your body a lot. I started to be angry at it, you know, for betraying me, even though it, it didn't. It just felt really strange to find out there was something growing inside of me that could kill me if I hadn't caught it. And I just had a hard time trusting my body, and that lasted for a while afterwards. You're looking out the window at people going to work, and you're wishing you could go to work, you know? And now I think it's crazy because I sometimes complain about going to class. I know how it feels to go from cancer and chemotherapy to trying to run. It doesn't feel like I'm a Division I athlete when I'm, you know, out the door, bald down the street, just like huffing and puffing, trying my best. not feeling like some days wanting to get out of bed and, you know, looking in the mirror and not recognizing the person that's staring back at you. I know how it can feel to come back from that and how hard it can be to build fitness again. Um, and I know how great it can feel to cross the finish line and feel like you're on fire. I am in remission. I was so excited to come back to school bald, excited to be back on the team, and I think I had a bit of a rude awakening because there is an aftermath to cancer treatment where you don't realize how much it quite affected you because you're kind of in survival mode, and I feel like I really started to process it after the fact, and I think I'm still processing it. Not realizing how chemotherapy affects your body, it is really bad for you. And I ended up breaking my hip. I was not in a place to be going back to running 60 miles a week. I was still bald, I was on crutches, I got COVID, and I was just like down in the dumps. It was really bad. I was, I was, I was done, but I wasn't really done. We really struggled with whether she was safe enough to perform, and that's the guiding principle for everybody. Through the surgery, and the recovery and the chemo, she still ran. And the problem was Bridget, you know, as I told her, I have to protect Bridget from Bridget. For me, I'd never caught an athlete that has gone through that. And so it was something new for me. It was not even clear if she was going to be led to compete because it was risky. I was able to tailor the training to make sure that she is doing just enough to compete, to be competitive. I'm gonna tell you this. I could not believe that when she came back to this racing, I did not even think she would be my number one athlete in the distance program. She ended the season with the fastest time in the 3,000 meters indoors. She competed the whole season, running faster than she has ever done before. Believing in Bridget has results, and that results were the ones that I knew it in that first day when she started uh, lacing up after chemotherapy, after everything that she had gone through, the injuries, and was supposed to be a great athlete, and she was. The year before, I had been bald for this opener race, and I'd written bear down on my head. And then I was competing the next year, and I competed really well. Where she is now, she's a beacon of hope for other people and for this whole condition. And she's so strong, and she's so self-confident. And the thing that is most important for me is Bridget learned to take care of Bridget. I think that I have a kind of an open road as far as where my mind's at and where my body's at and what I've overcome. My experience gave me a very unique patient empathy that I could bring to a health profession. If there's a story that could be written of how somebody can be who she wanted to be after conquering all those obstacles of resilience, bravery, and hard work, determination, focus, all those stuff, you see it in one name, Bridget Henley.